Hey guys, Brian Stevens, National Real Estate Post. I have Carl White, the infamous Carl White from The Marketing Animals, and we have Steve Powell, who's got some great scripting ideas for loan officers out there. So I reached out to Carl to have a conversation for the show today, and I had a couple of ideas of topics, and Carl gets on, he says, hey, he goes, we're kind of working through this whole thing right now, and what do you, what do you think about it? And it's very, very topical, and it's very, very timely. And uh, so Carl says, well, what happens when a loan officer pre-approves somebody a few months ago and you're at like two and three quarters? Well, now all of a sudden, you know, the buyer fatigue offer after offer, sit in the fence for a while, come back in and they get an offer accepted. We're all happy now, right? Well, the difference is we are now selling a four and an eighth interest rate, a four and a quarter interest rate, whatever the case may be. Uh, I had a conversation with the owner of a mortgage company and he said, well, for every 5%, uh, or excuse me, for every half percent that your rate goes up, you lose 5% purchasing power or it means that the buyer has to come up with another pound of flesh in order to make the payment with that new interest rate. So here's the question that I know you guys are running up against. Okay, so you're sitting down with this person. They're going to get sticker shock when they hear the new interest rate because their credit's just as good as it was a few months ago. What are they gonna do? Well, here's what I would do if I was them. I would go out and make sure that whatever rate my loan officer's quoting me is going to be a competitive one or hopefully the best one on the table because we know the whole bait and switch with other people, there's going to be the promising rate you can't deliver. So when your client goes and shops you, what do you as a loan officer do to uh, keep that client with you and maintain the integrity of the relationship with the real estate agent behind it? Cause they don't want this person shopping. So I know a lot of loan officers are running up against this right now. So Steve, you've been working on some ideas here. Why don't you tell me what you're recommending to loan officers to keep that relationship intact? Yeah, thanks, Brian. You know, what we're seeing is this, we're having buyers take a longer period of time to actually purchase homes. Uh, the average right now is six months to a year. And what's happening is you may have talked to them in October, November, uh, it's March now. And they're saying, well, I thought the rate you talked to me about was three and a quarter. Now it's four and a half, 4.6, 4.8. Hey, I'm gonna have to shop. You understand, right? And that's a hard conversation to have because it puts you on the defensive and you can't say, no, 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 don't shop. I don't want you to get the best deal. So one of the things we're doing real effectively is we're doing what's called a 15 minute mortgage refresh. And in that refresh, we follow up with our clients who are pre-approved and looking on Thursdays. So every Thursday, we're following up with our pipeline, a pre-approved and looking buyers. And in those conversations, we're saying, hey, Mr. Buyer, I know you've, you've been looking at homes. Uh, if you have a home that you're looking to make an offer in tonight or this weekend, let's book a 15 minute refresh. And in that refresh, what we're gonna do is go back over your goals and make sure that it still matches your plan in buying this home as the markets continue to change. Hey, uh, you're looking at a home, how about this afternoon at two o'clock? And so what we do is we book them in through Calendly into a 15 minute refresh. And what we're doing, Brian, is we're just going back over their goals. Because when what we're doing is we're saying, okay, here's the home, here's the sales price, here's the monthly payment, cash to close. But the key phrase, Brian, and I'll tell you this, we were losing four out of 10 transactions when the contract came in, and it got us back up to 94% of the contracts that came back in, we kept because we had a 15 minute mortgage refresh because what's happening is if they're, they're, they're hearing things like even this last two weeks, the feds raising rates and there's a potential of seven more rate hikes, but they're hearing it, but they don't know what it means to them until they find a home. And if we're not having the conversation before they go under contract, you've already lost them. So in that 15 minute mortgage refresh, Mr. Buyer, we're gonna walk through your goals. We're gonna go back over sales price, monthly payment, cash to close, answer any and all questions. And then in that refresh, you go through those and you walk through where the markets are. Uh, you'll notice that, hey, as the, the markets continue to get worse, you'll notice inflation's a major concern. Rates we talked about in October have literally gone up uh, to the mid 4% range. And you're gonna hear, oh, gas but you're going to say hey look here's the good news uh, eight, uh we just saw a, one of the national articles talking about house appreciation and here's where you can use some of your talking points it's 21 and a half percent homes have gone up in the last 12 months year over year so you just talk to them about where the markets are walk them through their options and brian here's the key phrase at the end of the conversation the mortgage refresh hey mr buyer is there anything that would prevent me from being your lender. And that's it. 
is there anything that would prevent me from being your lender? And Brian, guess, guess what? If they say, no, man, I really recognize where the markets are. It's crazy how much it's gone up. Yes, but I will tell you, if it were me, I would still buy right now because housing demand, it's predicted in 2022, we're gonna still see six and a, six and a half percent increase in more home sales. So this isn't a bubble. Uh, what we're seeing is 45 million millennials now are age 26 to 35. They're pushing the demand up. Appreciation's going up. If I were buying, I'd still buy now because at least the mortgage interest is tax deductible. But I can have an intelligent conversation with a buyer, make them feel comfortable with the numbers as they're making the offer. And that way, when they go in, like, like we just had several last night make offers, we get the contract today. Guess what, Brian? They already know. They're already comfortable and I've already got them to commit. Is there anything that would prevent me from being your lender? And if they say, yes, I'm still gonna have to shop. Brian, here's how cool it is. Well, guess what, Mr. Buyer? I completely understand, but the full resource of my office stops here. I'm not gonna be able to help you have the competitive advantage in today's marketplace because Mr. Buyer, what you've gotta realize is the lender you choose will make a difference on whether or not that listing agent will choose your deal. And our local advantage will help you in today's marketplace. So if you're gonna shop, shop now. And that way, depending on who you choose, they can help you win the deal. But I would love to work with you. And Brian, it keeps me from getting bitter. How many times do we get kicked in the gut when somebody says, hey, I got a shop, you understand, right? And you worked after hours, you did, you left your kid's soccer game, your football game, to help them win the deal. You knew the listing agent, you committed to a 21 day close, and they go to a big bank on Monday when they don't need you. So asking for the commitment up front allows you to know where you stand. It eliminates you getting bitter about the market and you're getting better. And you're just saying, hey, listen, I completely understand, but the full resource of my office stops today. So decide who you want to use. I would love to help you, but who you choose makes a difference in today's market. And so Brian, that 15 minute refresh kind of reframe everything. And, you, and somebody may say, well, how often do you do it? Well, the average buyer is taking six to 12 months to find a home in today's low inventory and super hot markets. So if I've got to do it every month, it doesn't matter how long, however long it takes for them to find the right home. So Mr. Buyer, when you find the home, here's the link. Let's book in a 15 minute refresh to make sure we're updating it based on your goals. And that's so you're it. Saying, you're saying like once a month? Is, you're I, doing this I month? would do it when they find a home. So I'll tell you this because last week we had four reprices for the worst. Yeah. So what you quoted Monday is different on Friday. So I tell them when you find a home, you're making an offer. Let's do a 15 minute mortgage refresh because that's the only way, Brian, I can ensure I'm still ahead on the deal because if I don't have the conversation, it's an assumption, not commitment. I'm not going to help them win the deal unless we've got a commitment. And then, and, you know, Brian, some people may say, well, won't that make your agent mad? No, I just tell my agent partner, I say, hey, I'll tell him, I'll say, hey, Brandon, Mr. Realtor, dude, I got good and bad news. Guess what it is, Brian? You want the good or bad news? Good news is they're well qualified. Bad news is I can't protect your commission because they're going to shop and use the lowest lender. And you and I both know that doesn't work out well. Yeah. Carl, what were you going to say? So I think that the key point is, is he has the conversation prior to the contract being written. Yes. And yes. that way they don't have the contract, then they get the sticker shot. You have that conversation with them right prior, say, so they'd reach out and say, hey, Brian, uh, we're, we're going out and uh, we found the house is at 123 Main Street. We're getting ready to write up the offer. You, you train them that that's when they're going to call you. That's when you have this conversation. Yeah, and the yeah. other part you can have is say, when you do that, when you submit that that application or that that offer, then I can, on your behalf, buyer Brian, I can call that listing agent, which I very well might know. I can call that listing agent and help make sure that your offer gets accepted. And, and, and all that's true. But the other purpose of it is that we can have this conversation before you get the contract. And instead of quoting a particular rate, we quote a rate range, a range of what the rates are, are at. So instead of locking myself in at four and a quarter and then it's at four or five, I'll say it, they're ranging between four and a quarter and 4.75. Yeah, you go, That's well, good. your range is gonna be between, uh, let's see, uh, Ukraine, COVID, 4% uh, and <laughs> about seven and three quarters. So we're gonna, <laughs> no, but a, a couple of observations here, uh, what I like about this one, I, I think it just as a matter of principle, professionally, especially in sales, how many times have you heard, uh, get in front of your problems, you know, get in front of it. 
that's mm. that's exactly what we're doing here. If you if, if you know where the sticky spot is going to be, get in front of it. Yeah. Uh, that's fantastic. The the other thing is, is that uh, being kinetic in general is good things come come from it. Um, the show that I did yesterday, as I'm talking about being kinetic, dusting off some of the old things that we had done, like first time home uh, buyer seminars for investors. Like, well, hold on a second here. Maybe we like it or don't like it. It's work. But it's you find as many things that are going to positively affect your business that are outside of, of your, your scope that you're going to find inside of it. So uh, best practices is you're having a conversation with a client right now. Um, best practices are they're still looking at properties, which means birds of a feather. They probably have friends who are having similar conversations with other lenders in their market right now, or excuse me, are not having similar conversations with other lenders. So you getting out in front of it means you've just created an uh, an outside account rep for you in the form of your client talking to their friends and family. You're speaking with your real estate agent out there uh, as well. And so again, being kinetic in general is going to help you out. So I, I really like what you're talking about here. Um, and I really like the fact that you said you have, you gotta have the fortitude to pull it off the table. You know, it's not just saying, hey, hold on, this is what we're doing for you. The customer is always right. When they say, I'm still going to have to shop you, you have to have the gumption to pull that off the table. I'll tell you right now, I bet you though, I, I just, I'll bet you anything, pulling it off the table gets more clients to work with you than not. If you say, well, I understand you're gonna have to shop me, but we're always here to help you out. That person's gonna shop you. I think they have a higher probability of leaving than you saying, well, hold on, then then we gotta stop here. We're, Cause we're, we gotta stop. And my last point is, is in a, a great point that you brought up here is, Everybody knows reputationally who your bait and shop hack lenders are in any local market. And if your client is gonna shop you and get ensnared by a bait and switch hack lender, which could happen. I mean, they don't know any better. This guy's gonna do it for a half point or half a percent better. Um, real estate agents understand that. Everybody knows who these, who's these loan officers are. So when you mentioned, hey, I, my team stops right here, you're gonna go work with somebody else right now, but what we're trying to do is preserve your your opportunity to go ahead and get this house going forward because of who you are reputationally versus getting caught up with some unsavory unsavory types. I think is a really big point to make. So this is all great stuff, guys. Yeah. And uh, but it, what it requires here, and here's my question for you, is uh, it does require loan officers to go out there and make these calls. I mean, how do you best uh, prescribe that? I mean, do we prescribe it by saying, hey, let's time block this? Let's, um, you know, spend an hour a day reaching out to our clients. You know, I mean, what's a- uh... Two hours a day, nine to 11. So we do two hours of outbound calls. Our outbound calls happen in my branch and in my personal team from nine to 11 every day. And then we do all of our consultations from two to four every 30 minutes, every day. And what that does is the morning you're making outbound calls and you're booking them for consultations early afternoon. And, and you know, Brian, I think here's what happens is, Loan officers are not having the hard conversation when they've already, we've already done all the work. And that's part of what caused us to implement this. It's like, yeah. dude, we've done the heavy lifting. We've gone through the bank statements. We've gone through the documents, the asset, the income. And so when you have these conversations up front, but Brian, even think about this, are, are we as lenders, and this is something we're doing, Mr. Buyer, the competitive advantage my office brings is even the local appraisals. The appraisers you use make a difference because if that home comes in $40,000 short, do you have the cash to literally bring the difference? And I gotta tell you, some of these online, big lowest rate lenders are just using the cheapest appraisers. So it's not only in the follow-up, it's not only in the phone call, it's not only in the local reputation, it's also in our network of appraisers and insurance companies and home inspectors. And what you don't realize is, and Brian, I love, love this phrase. We say it all the time. Brian, a lender's failure to perform will cost you, Mr. Buyer, thousands of dollars. A lender's buyer to perform, a lender's failure to perform will cost you thousands of dollars. And then I'll go into a story. Hey, let me tell you about Leslie. Leslie literally closed last month. She went with a big bank. She was referred to me. And I've got to tell you, she called me two weeks prior to closing. I talked to her. She talked to a big bank. She decided to go with who her checking account was with. And she called me 14 days ahead of closing, crying. And she said, Steve, I made a mistake. They declined my loan and I have $10,000 of non-refundable earnest money on the table. Can you help me? And I'm telling you, Brian, I have no idea why the lender couldn't do it. We later found out the loan officer just quit 
but it didn't matter. Leslie was gonna lose all of her money. I, and in 14 days, we were able to take her from start to finish and close that transaction. And it doesn't matter, Mr. Buyer, until it matters. And I would love the opportunity to work with you. Let me ask you this. Is there anything that would prevent me from being your lender? Yeah, I like that line, anything to prevent me from being your lender. You know, another thing, just kind of spitballing this thing right now, and uh, we'll wrap this up in a second, but it's, uh, it's like, go ahead and shop me. But uh, the only way for another loan officer to give you a reasonable expectation of what that rate is going to be is to pull your credit. And the last thing you want to have is 15 credit pulls before you come back to me and say, hey, Brian, I think you were right in the first place. Because all that's <laughs> going to do is tear your scores up and, and, and compromise your ability to go ahead and get a get approved this is a great strategy and what i really like about you guys is uh it, it, very timely like everything is timely everything has a shelf life and uh and what we have to do is read the tea leaves of what the market is doing and chart our course figure out what our best practices are and this is certainly one that's timely and i i know for certain that every loan officer is facing this and i'll tell you what here's the thing by the time you figure it out it's going to be too late because your your client ain't going to tell you i'm going to go shop you right now brian you have to proactively get in front of this stuff but by the time you find out, they're already going to be approved with another lender and, and, and they're off and running. Get out in front of it because you took the time to go ahead and pre-approve these people. I don't care if you have 40 or 60 in your pipeline. Each one of those is a $4,000 check. I'd rather have a 15-minute conversation yes. with somebody to make that 4000 bucks than you an better. hour and 45 minutes sit down to, to do a 1003 and take a loan application. So, guys, uh, if they want to reach out to the marketing animals, uh, how do we have people reach out to you? Uh, what you do is you can just you can just click the link uh, right over here uh, beside us, and uh, Steve's actually got a recording where he go went more into these scripts and more in depth. And we'll and and, and Brian, uh, thanks to you, brother. We'll uh, we'll just give it to everybody. So you don't, there's no credit card or trial or anything like that. We'll just give it to you. Cool. I like it, guys. Thank you so much for your time, and uh, I look forward to seeing you hopefully sooner than later. Great seeing you, Brian. All right, thanks, guys. Bye-bye.